afterwards. Uh, we have 50 people registered, but uh, so far half of uh, people uh, who registered joined our webinar, but I'm happy to start to kick off the discussion. Please feel free to use the chat box. Uh, I think after so many months working from home, we are all quite well used to using Teams, but uh, in any case, the chat is on your uh, right side of your screen. Please feel free to put your name and the city that you are representing uh, to introduce yourself and give us a bit more of the overview uh, of your activities in the chat box. As I mentioned before, the webinar will be recorded. We will share the recorded afterwards with all the uh, people interested. Uh, we will. Uh, we already shared with you the PowerPoint presentation, which we'll be using today. We will send the final update after the webinar as well. Um, and of course, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to put it in the box. I will moderate the discussion and later on, we of course dedicated the time for direct questions and answers. Uh, just for you to know, um, this is very informative webinar with many technical details and probably a lot of information to digest. So uh, please feel free to come back to us afterwards during the week and in coming weeks to me and to Angela if you have any questions, especially if you will have the follow up with, uh, with discussions with your colleagues back in the in the city halls. So just for you to know, this is just a starting point. We the, the process is still ongoing and we are more than happy to have a direct uh, bilateral exchanging uh, between all of you. Uh, so coming back to the agenda, uh, we will uh, this uh, our aim is to inform you uh, about the European funds, instruments and programs, which are of course focused to support the SMEs and entrepreneurship. The webinar is the initiative of the working group SMEs and entrepreneurship. The meeting of the working group will be taking place on 13th of June. Um, probably you already received the save the date information, but of course uh, more detailed um, uh, information and briefing materials will come uh, will come to your email will arrive to your email boxes uh, very very soon. But today we'll focus mostly on Horizon Europe and the new tool uh, designed by the European Commission to support the innovation, the disruptive innovation and actors in innovation ecosystems, such as, of course, SMEs and entrepreneurship. And the new instrument, the new entity is the European Innovation Council. We will present you the calls and the support dedicated for SMEs and entrepreneurship uh, via the COSME. Uh, Invest EU, React EU, European Regional Development Fund, and the, the technical uh, support instruments. Later on, as I mentioned before, we will have the space uh, for you to ask us direct questions. And please uh, remember that the, this is a very technical thing. And if you don't understand, don't know all the acronyms, please ask the questions because sometimes we are blind spotted on this issue. So please feel free to also um, help us to make it as clear and as uh, useful for you as possible. Uh, at the very beginning, I just wanted also to highlight you more strategic work of the European Commission and the European institutions focus on support of SMEs and entrepreneurship. Um, in, in last month, uh, we can see a big development in supporting the, in changing also the paradigm of perceiving the support for the industrial policies. Uh, in March, the Commission published the a new industrial strategy, um, which uh, the update of uh, which was mainly, of course, focused on the challenges generated by the COVID uh, crisis, but also thinking more into the twin transition into digital green economy, which will make our industry more competitive. Why we are mentioning this? Because this is the first time in history that actually in the strategic approach to the development of the industry, there's a strong focus um, and um, role of the SMEs and entrepreneurship emphasized 
in this uh, in this portfolio of the Commission. Uh, the uh, general um, strategy is designed around supporting 14 ecosystems and uh, strengthening the cooperation between the stakeholders. On the slide, you can see how these ecosystems are. What what is the focus of those ecosystems? Um, I think quite interesting for you is the stronger support for retail, textile, proximity economy, uh, and also the, uh, the work and the challenges related to the tourism sector. Uh, the main, um, one of the main um, goals of the strategy was also to change the way of thinking about the industry into the way of thinking about the employees and the people who will work in the industry. So very strong dimension and the role of the rescaling and upscaling of the industrial workforce. Uh, the second uh, strategic document, which is designed, which was designed by the European Commission and approved uh, in last month, is the strategy for the for the sustainable and digital Europe. The strategy for SMEs for sustainable and digital Europe. And uh, again, the Commission and the European institutions, of course, are aware that. The SMEs are the backbones of the um, European economy, with having 90% of the people working in private sector uh, employed by the um, by the SMEs. But this time we can also see a bit more of the of the change, with a stronger emphasis of calling for a better capacity building for the transition to support the sustainable and digital transition of the SMEs and entrepreneurship, reducing the um, entrance, uh, the barrier, the, all the entr uh, entrance barriers to access the European market and also increasing the access to the financing, to the finances related to the access to the Invest EU, to the ERDF and also with the emergency funding related to the REACT EU. This is just a main highlights of those two strategic documents uh, in our economic development forum. We uh, try to share with you on a regular basis the po complex policy briefs. So in the coming one before the summer break, you will receive a better and more complex overview of those two strategic documents. But this is something just uh, we wanted to um, make aware you of related the work of the European institution in context of support the industry with focus on the SMEs and entrepreneurship and the new strategy for SMEs. And now I will give uh, the floor to Angela who will give you a better and um, complex overview of finance uh, support related to the EU programs and instruments for support of SMEs and entrepreneurship. And please feel free to put the questions in the chat. Angela, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you very much. So, uh, yes, um, firstly, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Angela, Angela Russo, and I joined the EuroCities team in March as the funding officer. So for those of you that I didn't have the pleasure to meet, e meet you, uh, it, is, uh, it is a pleasure to do the, that uh, now. Uh, and yes, as Alexandra mentioned, I will be uh, focusing today on funds, finance and uh, programs on, e on EU level. And uh, today we are focusing on Horizon Europe uh, and more precisely the... Oh, wait. <laughs> Do you see still the presentation? No, I think some... Um... Yes, I it disappeared. Just I apologize. I think I'm going to stop. I will, yes. Now it's back. Now it is back. Perfect. Just to uh, see it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so yes, to go back, um, we are focusing on Horizon Europe, uh, pillar one, pillar two, uh, covering clusters from two to six. Uh, and more, more so on the um, on the pillar three, innovative Europe. Um, as Alexandra mentioned, the European Innovation Council, but uh, also European Institute of Innovation and uh, Technology. Uh, we will proceed with single market program. Single market program aims to support the uh, single market, the competitiveness of enterprises with uh, SMEs included. 
and it brings together um, different separate programs from uh, from previous uh, funding funding period in order to streamline them in order to build synergies between them uh, and build one uh, agile uh, framework for, for finance for for internal markets and that's why we find Cosme yes now under a single market program and we will touch upon some uh, of the calls that we know are coming then um, we will focus on uh, invest eu that now also brings together different uh, financing instruments in forms of loans and guarantees and we will go over its its structure and and what it comprises of um, and then we will proceed with structural and investment funds uh, concretely erdf but since you know that still um, the cohesion policy regulation is uh, being uh, negotiated, we will touch upon it briefly in the context of uh, next generation Europe and um, more, more precisely react EU uh, from the perspective of uh, SMEs. And we will round up with technical support instrument, the successor of structural reform support program of DG reform, uh, because they do have an ongoing uh, call that uh, might be interesting to some of you. And we will, of course, round up with uh, the question and answers round. Now, this is um, all a very uh, let's say general overview that just to give um, a, a, a picture of what's out there. But uh, if uh, you would like to dive into uh, some of these topics more in depth uh, and elaborate it further, uh, we can, um, of course, discuss that uh, as a follow up of, of this uh, webinar. Uh, so just to um, also go over quickly how Next Generation EU contributed to these uh, programs that we will uh, touch upon today. Uh, on um, um, on top of uh, MFF's um, 86 billion for Horizon Europe, through Next Generation Europe, uh, it is added um, 5.41 uh, billion. For Invest EU, it is uh, 6.07. And the React is, of course, completely new instrument, uh, fully uh, brought brought to uh, to support the response to COVID uh, COVID nineteen on the regional level completely. Um, then, um, so if okay, I'm just, uh, regarding Horizon Europe, um, I would to quickly. Um, Angela, we cannot hear you well. Yes. Okay, perfect. We, uh, yes, yes, it wasn't coming uh, from me. Perfect. So going back to Horizon Europe, uh, as you know, we are working with uh, drafts at the moment. So I wanted to come to you with a short overview of the calls uh, that we are aware that are uh, coming that touch upon SMEs uh, directly or um, or at least encourage their their participation in the proposal uh, strongly. Uh, and uh, we are expecting the work programs to be launched mid-June. Uh, uh, so um, hopefully we will also then get some uh, updates uh, about the deadlines because we're, uh, we're still also uh, waiting to see whether deadlines will, uh, will remain uh, the same with this uh, postponed opening uh, and publication. Um, yes, uh, so in the cluster too, um, what could be interesting from the perspective of SMEs and entrepreneurship, uh, it's the call focusing on green technologies and materials for uh, cultural uh, heritage. So in cluster two, I found uh, only only this one that's, that strongly encourages the participation of SMEs. But again, now I'm not diving into what type of action, budget, uh, and and uh, and other information because you will see there are, there are quite a few calls. Uh, but if one of those particularly catches your attention, we can always uh, organize a, a follow up uh, and dive into into some of these calls more in depth. 
Um, in cluster three, as you can see, there are a bit more uh, more calls, um, and uh, the topics that are mentioned are cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, privacy of personal data, knowledge networks, situation awareness, and so on. And these are all calls that have deadlines. Uh, and now, as we speak, September, October. It's either, either in September or October, depending on on a, on a call. Um, uh, so it is it is quite uh, quite near. We are fully aware of that. But we can do a similar scanning also for the calls that have uh, the deadlines in uh, 2022. We are currently actually uh, working on um, analysis of calls for 2022 uh, as well. Uh, when it comes to cluster four, uh, digital industry and space, the topics that the uh, calls uh, under this cluster uh, cover are sustainable transition and strategic digital technologies in relation to pre-commercial uh, procurement. Um, these are the three that um, that uh, directly encourage the participation of, of SMEs or target uh, SMEs in cluster uh, four. The slides will be shared with you afterwards, and you already have them. So I will, uh, I, uh, you will have the opportunity also to 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 read them uh, and write them down uh, after as well. Uh, so uh, cluster five, uh, climate, energy, and mobility. In this case, um, um, there are many interesting calls in relation to energy efficiency and buildings, but also the innovation uptake in the context of a new European Bauhaus. Uh, proceeding to uh, cluster six, food, bio economy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. Under this cluster, SMEs can participate in the calls uh, that are related to transparency of food systems, uh, circular systemic solutions, water security, and governance in uh, bio economy. So, depending on uh, areas of interest in your cities, maybe an angle can be taken um, for, for these calls um, here. Uh, still on the topic of uh, Horizon Europe, um, recently launched European Innovation Council under Pillar 3. Uh, I am uh, sure that many of you have uh, already heard about the open calls for Pathfinder, Transition and Accelerator. The work programs uh, are out and uh, the calls uh, are uh, open. But just in case, uh, the Pathfinder is, um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a part of European Innovation Council that aims to support the emerging uh, breakthrough technology. Uh, while the transition uh, is more aimed to build uh, on research results and to fund the further development uh, of technology. And the accelerator aims to support through funds and investments, uh, startups and SMEs that, um, um, that, um, that can develop or scale up, scale up the game-changing innovation. Apart from these uh, these uh, calls, um, the calls under the under these streams, um, the European Innovation Council also offers the business acceleration services, uh, and um, SMEs can uh, can get uh, through this uh, service uh, mentoring or coaching, expertise or or training. Um, also, I would like to focus for briefly on the prizes through a European Innovation Council, the European Innovation Council, uh, the, the capital prize, the innovation capital um, prize that um, EDF had a very informative uh, webinar on, but there are also some other ones that might be interesting, like the social innovation prize or innovation, um, innovation procurement prize. Um, and then finally, European Innovation Ecosystem um, is also a, a program that will fund um, and support a more connected and a more efficient innovation uh, ecosystems. Uh, and um, in this, uh, under this working program, uh, what could be interesting is under destination one. So it is divided in three destinations, and the destination one is interconnected innovation systems. What could be interesting for cities under this destination is the coal building capabilities in innovation procurement. The, the destination too focuses on elevating the scalability potential of businesses 
And the destination three focuses uh, is this call partnership of innovative SMEs. This partnership is uh, a follow up of Eurostar, so it's becoming uh, Euro, Eurostar three, and it is a, a co fund a co fund action. So aim, aiming more at um, of course national national level, but will turn into Euro Eurostar subsequently. Um, Still at the topic of European Innovation Council uh, and the uh, Pathfinder Accelerator and uh, Transition uh, calls. These are the calls that are open uh, at the moment. Uh, we have the three thematic ones, two under transition and one under accelerator. And the open calls are, are ongoing. The open call means that um, they do not refer to any predefined thematic uh, priority. Uh, and uh, the final call in enhancing uh, synergies between the European Innovation Council and Startup Europe um, focuses on uh, those um, those projects that already received uh, the, the support from um, European Innovation Council uh, that um, that uh, that are expected to scale up um, and, um, and 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 uh, grow in the future, and um, they they target startup ecosystem builders. Uh, and uh, these uh, uh, links are incorporated in the presentation, so you can um, you can um, explore more in depth uh, um, when when we follow when we send the presentation again uh, with the links uh, to you. Um, these are open at the moment. Uh, and the third part of the Pillar 3, uh, European Institute for Innovation and Technology, uh, the kick that will be launched uh, in, uh, in, in, in this next call will be um, will target the cultural and creative sector and, and industries. Uh, and um, on the timeline, you can see that it is expected for the open call for um, for consortia to be open uh, in October uh, and November with the uh, signing of agreements in the quarter three of 2022. Uh, there is an article on the collaboration platform that goes into depth in what is a kick, how it is formed, uh, what is uh, what a kick should do, uh, and uh, yes, the, the, the final aim of a kick uh, is to produce uh, products, services, technologies, uh, and 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 the focus is to um, to to contribute to creation of profit and revenue and creation of jobs. Uh, so that is the the the, the final aim of of a kick. And if you would be interested in, in uh, pursuing this call, um, there is also a networking platform uh, where you can explore who, who else is, is uh, working on, on similar topics. In the context of uh, this uh, new kick that is being launched, uh, I just wanted to briefly announce the, um, the, 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 the event where um, the European Institute for Innovation and Technology will present its new strategy. Uh, so if any of you is interested in that, uh, I included also the registration registration uh, link. Um, then um, moving on to, I see we received a question. I will, uh, when we finish the presentation, I will go, go back to, to all of them. Uh, so um, we're pro proceeding with the single market program and COSME. Uh, I also here wanted just to uh, briefly point out some of the calls uh, that we know uh, from the that, that are coming soon from the draft program. All the calls have been postponed. Uh, so, uh, except the and the the, uh, the one that is on the, the the portal for funding and tender is Enterprise Europe Network. So I included the the link to it as well. But if any of these calls uh, also seems uh, interesting to you, uh, we can uh, we can set up a, a call uh, one to one or um, or come up with a more more suitable follow up. Uh, to to check the, the 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 time that it opens the the the, the budget uh, and and uh, so on. Um, invest uh, yes. invest EU uh, program uh, is bringing together uh, these thirteen uh, financing instruments uh, that you see under this uh, roof. And it's bringing them into four uh, four uh, policy areas for the program 2021-2027, out of which you can see that SMEs uh, are the third one. Uh, 
Uh, and Invest EU program consists of these three main parts: Invest EU Fund, Invest EU Advisory Hub, and Invest EU Portal. Um, so um, focusing on the policy area concerning uh, SMEs, uh, what uh, Invest EU supports is uh, finance and uh, capital support. So finance for those SMEs uh, that are innovative uh, and the finance for SMEs in cultural and creative sectors and uh, capital support for those SMEs that at the end of 2019 uh, we're not in difficulties, but uh, after that are facing challenges connected to uh, COVID-19 COVID uh, emergency. Um, investment, Invest EU fund um, provi provides, as I mentioned, the, the, the support to SMEs, but how can SMEs uh, access it? Uh, so it is provided on the on the um, local level uh, and um, interested SMEs can um, contact their local intermediary and uh, see um, is the if a particular financing program is covered by the Invest EU. Uh, I also included a link uh, to which um, by accessing this link and accessing the map on the link, one can find uh, these local in the intermediaries and see who they can who uh, they can contact on in in or in on local um, local uh, environment. Um, Invest EU Advisory Hub uh, is the the second element of Invest EU uh, program, uh, and it uh, focuses on technical support technical support that is offered by advisory partners for um, promoters, project promoters and intermediaries in order to help them uh, to, 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 to develop their project so that the, the project can reach the financing uh, stage. Uh, this uh, Invest EU Advisory Hub will also bring together different technical assistance program uh, and will continue that under Invest EU Advisory Hub, uh, such as Jaspers or Elena. Uh, they or uh, EASI, they will now be part of this Invest EU advisory hub, uh, and um, we and what kind of of support this uh, advisory hub will offer is the developing of financing projects, implementing uh, of financing projects, uh, and awareness ri uh, awareness rising preparatory activities for investment areas for those that show uh, a clear uh, market market gap. So when it comes to advisory hub, the beneficiary that beneficiaries that ask for advice of the advisory hub do not have to also apply for funds uh, or of uh, invest EU, but some um, advisory initiatives will be connected to uh, policy uh, to policy windows. Uh, and uh, that's why it, it consists of, let's say, structurally from two parts. One is the general entry point for project promoters and intermediate seeking advisory support. And the other one will be uh, open under a specific uh, policy policy area. Uh, Invest EU will be available as of third quarter of 2021 on the website of uh, of uh, Invest EU Advisory Hub. That that will be the starting point to 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 ask for to to, to ask to um, to join to join it. Uh, yes, and in the meantime, there is still possible to uh, refer these questions and to ask the technical support, the uh, technical assistance from European Investment Advisory Hub, and more specifically in in the case of uh, cities urbis that remains uh, um, that that urbis will not fall now under um, invest you like Casper or uh, Elena. Uh, Elena. Uh, and another interesting element of Invest EU is the member state uh, compartment. So member states can choose if they wish so to voluntarily contribute to Invest EU from their cohesion fund according to their uh, national priorities. And, and um, it is up to 2% um, um, until the January uh, 2023, uh, 2023 and after 2023, January 2023, uh, it will uh, rise to up to uh, 3%. Uh, 
three uh, percent, and it is also a tool for for member states to implement part of their uh, recovery and resilience plans if they wish so. That's next generation uh, EU day. Um, on the topic of uh, next generation EU and uh, assistance to SME street, as I mentioned, um, we will briefly touch upon ERDF in the context of uh, React EU. Um, as you see, it can uh, provide support in form of working capital or investment supports to SMEs that have suffered uh, greatly through after after COVID-19, especially those in tourism and uh, culture. Um, and uh, um, the, the assistance is much more flexible, it is much faster, it is much more uh, agile. Uh, so you can see that it is also the case in relation to um, thresholds established for sustainable urban development for ERDF. So these, uh, of course, ERDF is uh, access through um, regional managing authorities. So this is just some update uh, of the angle that, that has been taken uh, when it comes to SMEs, ERDF and uh, next generation Europe. And still on the on the topic of structural structural support, uh, so um, technical support uh, instrument is the successor of structural reform support program, and it is um, the DG reform uh, works on it, uh, and it is aimed at uh, member states. Uh, so it offers assistance to member states, but at the moment um, there is an open call that uh, might be interesting with the deadline on 31st of October uh, that uh, I wanted to share with you. And um, under this link, what can be supported uh, are examples of projects. So what kind of ideas um, so far uh, were published through 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 that kind uh, that kind of call? So maybe you can get uh, an inspiration uh, as well. Um, so the reason why I'm bringing it up is because in its it in its uh, wide structure under growth and business environment, uh, we can also find SMEs uh, uh, in tourism and other other sectors. So it can be interesting for uh, for this working group. And as I said, they, they have currently uh, an ongoing technical uh, support uh, call that is open until 31st of October. But as I mentioned, it goes uh, through member states. So each member state uh, might have a different internal um, deadline uh, for uh, for these uh, calls. Um, and uh, it goes so that uh, that uh, there are two ways. One is for you to touch uh, to get in touch with your coordinating authorities uh, and develop and send to the, the project proposals or um, priorities that you that you want to see in the future through coordinating authorities that then send it to 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 DG Regio, or even to contact directly Growth and Business Environment Department. Uh, through the webinar that uh, that uh, they recently shared with us, they they invited us to to reach out to them with any potential uh, question. Here is uh, here is the email of of that particular um, uh, that particular department uh, because then they on their side uh, can also um, help you um, help you in preparing your proposals towards your coordinating authorities. Then then we'll send them to to DG Regio. Uh, in the priority list that that uh, they decide, and then they will eventually be chosen by um, DG Regio, uh, according that those who are uh, positioned uh, more highly uh, at the priority list. For this um, for this um, uh, this call, you can also find the draft uh, template. Um, just to see uh, what kind of expectations um, it sets. So the, the 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 type of projects can be found on on this link, and uh, the draft template can be found on this. And in case uh, there are follow-up questions that uh, for this particular call, it can be sent to 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 this uh, address. Uh, Thank you for your attention. I uh, finished uh, five uh, five minutes earlier, so we might have um, uh, more time for for questions. Uh, yes, here is my uh, email. If you wish to 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 contact me, uh, feel free to to do so. And I noticed that we had 
uh, to questions uh, so far. So I think we can proceed <laughs> with them. Should I stop sharing? Yes. Yes, great. Thank you very much, Angela. And maybe I will give the floor to Ulrike to directly ask the question and also promote the work of the working group long term investments. So hello, Ulrike. Nice to see you. Hello, everybody. Hello from Sweden. Uh, well, well, I had one question and that was about the kick on the culture and creative sector. I wonder if the call criteria has been published because in the draft, uh, in, in, in the timeline you were showing, it says June. Do you have any information if there's more? Actually, I, I was looking for it yesterday evening. I didn't find anything new. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't find anything, uh, no, any of this regarding the, the call. Uh, oh, no. there, probably it, it has been postponed. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we're still we're still waiting uh, for, for it to be published. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the second one, which was why Alexandra gave me the word um, is working group long term investment is going to have a session with the uh, EI advisory hub and that will be after summer and at the same time I would like to promote that we are looking for one more vice chair or co-chair I'm sorry um, Cologne with Max were co-chair and unfortunately for us luckily for Max he has the top job in Berlin at one of the ministries. So we do need a co-chair. So if there's anybody who's interested in hearing what we're doing, um, do contact Alexandra or myself. It is a working group that is dedicated to long-term investment because we see that there is a dire need to increase long-term investment as the amounts of long-term investment after the financial crisis 2008 still have not been reached. And um, there is this this topic which we are going to dig into next week, the 15th, um, on how to make better depreciation rules so that cities are able to make more investments without burdening their balance. So, so it's it's a little bit technical, but, but it's no rocket science really, and it's extremely interesting. So please do call me or Alexandra. A new chair is very, very welcome. That was it for me. Thank you very much, Ulrike. I don't know if any of you have any additional questions related to the presentation. Maybe, Antonio, you have uh, some as the working group chair of the working group entrepreneurship and SMEs. Good morning, everyone. No, I don't have any questions specifically. I just want to, you to share the, this new update of the, the presentation because we have new information. And I think uh, it is, was important to, to make this webinar because to make a checks and balance about the funds. So just, uh, just what I have to say and thank you for your presence. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> I'm glad it was helpful. OK, I think please feel free to also think, uh, share your ideas about uh, the, the calls, if the, your city might be interested in applying, also with the new instruments and the design of the support for the SMEs and entrepreneurship by the European institutions. We still have a bit of time, uh, so we can also share the general reaction. If there are no questions, I mean, we can, uh, of course, wrap up early just uh, just for you to know. Uh, also, um, as Angela mentioned, she joined our team uh, in March, but uh, we, like most of you know, we have this new collaboration platform, uh, which is the tool to which you all have the access and which you can use also to post your uh, ideas for applying together for the call of proposals. 
Um, so you can also look for the project partners through our platform and also through Angela who will promote the partner searches among you, among our members. So also as EuroCities, we provide this type of service. If you're still having challenges with accessing the platform and so on, also please feel free to contact our IT services in this uh, uh, to, to, to uh, get this type of support. Um, we as the working group uh, entrepreneurship and SMEs will have the next meeting on 13th of June together with a working group from Social Affairs Forum um, working on employment. This save the date was already shared with all the members of Economic Development Forum. On 15 of June, we will be having also the meeting that uh, Ulrika presented with the working group Long Term Investment, which will be focused on the economic governance review. So actually about the challenges related to the fiscal rules uh, for the local authorities, local and regional authorities to invest more, especially with the new post-crisis approach, which should be in our uh, reflection implemented. Um, and uh, also, as Angela mentioned, if you are seeing the need for having the bilateral exchange about the calls or organizing a separate information, informative webinar, about one of the particular instruments, tools or calls, also please feel free to uh, contact us. Um, some of the calls were still ongoing with that previous financial perspective, but now we are starting a new era of this, um, of this uh, new financial instruments. And we also hope that our lobby lob work had an impact on the structure of the funds, but we're also more than happy to help you to implement and also hear your feedback about how those new tools and instruments are working. So this is that something we definitely would like to hear your views on. Mm, OK, I would say a final call for the questions. I never know it was what was clear enough or not clear at all. I will I never know again. <laughs> It's difficult to start. Uh, it, it was very, very clear. You've done an excellent job, don't worry. <laughs> That's good. That we're happy to hear. I don't know, Angela, if you have any uh, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, it, it came to my mind that maybe briefly I can show the partner search that you mentioned because it's, it's pretty yes. new. We are still learning all together how to use it. Uh, so um, I will share briefly my uh, screen with you to show how to access the partner search. Um, yes, I think because also Ulrika, you were having uh, questions related this last time we had the call. We've gotten work now about the partner. Yeah, well, 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 yes, that, that was uh, some weeks ago. Um, but but for our part, the partner search has been working very, very well. And I got into contact with a city that is very strong on the topic that we are not. So we are going to continue a dialogue and maybe, maybe, maybe start um, going into a um, horizon call in December. So that's, that's very good for capacity building. So it worked excellently for our part. So thank you, EuroCities. Very happy to hear, to hear that. Uh, so uh, I think I'm sharing right now the screen uh, and uh, in order to access the part of funding and funding information, um, it is possible to click on quick access and funding section and that will open the, the section de dedicated to, to updates on funding and, and um, briefs and, and um, different kind of information. You can also uh, a calendar with upcoming in possessions, brokerage events and, and so on. But to focus on partner search on the left side, you can uh, in this uh, menu, you can find um, this uh, page where I uh, created a short guideline on how to how to create the, um, the a partner search, how to publish it. So um, in, uh, in, in with this approach and with this platform, um, uh, we offer you the full uh, control to publish whenever you want, completely autonomously, uh, your uh, your uh, your um, express of interest or or your concept note in search of partners. So it is enough to click uh, on this part new, uh, click on the new post, uh, select the partner search template, and then 
fill create the post, click the create a post and fill out the template that asks for uh, for certain information. Of course, you can uh, decide how how detailed you you would like to be or or which which part. You don't have to answer all of the questions, but uh, the more you do, the, the the more helpful it will be to to your colleagues. And after this partner search uh, template is created, you will find a little button that says publish. Now here it says cancel, but um, you will see the the the, um, uh, the option publish, and then we will subsequently add um, in in settings also the the type of program and the deadline uh, so that um, it can be easily uh, searched for. And all the partner searches appear here. So far we have these uh, these five. Um, and um, you can explore explore uh, with um, with your colleagues uh, what could be interesting to you. Another way to search through them is to go to home page, to go to uh, view all partner search, and here it is a little bit um, no no sorry not here uh, so home and then go to search by content type, and then in the content type. You will see some additional um, additional um, uh, tags that can help with your search. So you can hide, for example, the the news. You can hide the funding briefs, and then focus or these unassigned documents and focus only on partner search. So uh, these these calls uh, right here. And then you can also see to which program they refer. So Erasmus in this case. Uh, and uh, and uh, so on. So that that's that's a brief, very brief uh, <laughs> uh, presentation of how this this can be used. In if if you have any difficulties or uh, you would uh, you are interested in any kind of advice, uh, you can always uh, write me and we can build the first one together. Uh, and then afterwards, through the newsletter, all the new all the new partner search will be shared with uh, with the network. That's Great, thank you very much. Uh, I think we can wrap it up. Uh, we will share the um, presentation, the link to the registration in the, this week for sure. Thank you very much for your time and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Angela. Have a nice day to all of you. Bye bye.